What's up everyone, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and we are back with another video. We have taken the past couple weeks off because I've been getting a new computer system up and running and we just needed a little bit of a break after our Black Friday sale and releasing those new products. So thank you so much for allowing us to take that break. We're coming back super refreshed and I'm really, really excited to be back making content for you all. With that said, in today's video, we're gonna be covering something that you guys have requested a ton, and that is how to make a modern pop punk song in the style of Machine Gun Kelly, Jaden, Lil Huddy, any of those artists that are signing to DTA Records or getting the Travis Barker features, this is kinda of gonna nail down all of those. And before anybody addresses us in the comments, I do understand that this is not traditional pop punk in the sense of like Blink-182 or New Found Glory or Sum 41. Um, so just know, we're not gonna be talking about that today. I do understand that most people see these as two very, very different genres, or at least styles. However, this is what we're gonna be covering today. Other than that, if you have any questions during the video, leave us a comment down below and I'll answer as many as I possibly can. But let's hop into Cubase so I can go ahead and start making this song from scratch with you all. All right, so now we're in my DAW. I'm gonna use Cubase and let's go ahead and start. I've got the tempo set for 170. That tends to be pretty good for these kind of upbeat pop punk songs. So the first thing I think I wanna do is grab my guitar over here that I've got set up. And then really when I'm making stuff in this genre, I like to just kind of start with a guitar lead and then we can kind of take everything from there. So I'm thinking about maybe doing some something like. So I've got a uh, Fender Strat right here and right now I'm on the uh, neck pickup, but I'll play around and see what, you know, tone we like. So I'm gonna track something to tempo and then we'll go in and we'll start processing. All right, so I've got my guitar tracked. Here's what it sounds like. So now let's go ahead and process. All right, so we've got guitar rig up and there's actually a preset that I quite like. It's called all the blink things. Of course, it's just all the small things, Blink-182. And what's cool about this is it's a split tone, so it's gonna give me a left and a right to kind of make a stereo guitar. And uh, it sounds really nice. So this is just one guitar, but with this preset. And now I wanna go ahead and add some EQ to smooth this out. All right, so I've got Pro-Q3. What I'm doing is just cutting out some of the lows to get rid of any hum, cutting out some of the highs just because it's, it's nasty sizzle, we don't really need it. And then I've got a dynamic EQ right here at like 2.8, and then right here at like 4K, and then just thinning out some of these mids. And that just kind of softens it up and makes it feel a little bit more like a natural guitar cabinet. And then I think I'm gonna add a little bit of Haas effect just to spread it out a little bit more. Here we have it with Haas. And then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and start layering in some extra guitars. So I'm gonna track in some palm mutes and then we'll kind of lay down some drums. Okay, so I laid down a palm mute. I have a left track and a right track, so I tracked it twice. And then I'm just processing this with guitar rig. It's basically just the jump, which I think is just like the um, Marshall sim. And then that layered over just sounds a little bit like this. Now let's go ahead and start laying down some drums. And for drums, I'm gonna use our new kit, uh, Sour Candy. We just released a multi-sampled, fully acoustic drum kit, and I'm pretty excited about it. So let's go ahead and let's throw that in. All right, so I've got it pulled up. I'm gonna use the contact version, and um, I'll go to our mixer just so you can see. So all I'm gonna do right now is just lay down something pretty simple, and um, I'll just kinda, kinda start adding in hi-hats and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and lay down some MIDI and then we'll be back in. Here we go now, I have some MIDI and the guitar. I'll go in and I'll add my hi-hats and stuff later when I kind of figure out what I wanna do. And uh, let's go ahead and let's add bass. So what I'm gonna do is add another contact instrument and there is a Blink-182 bass that I found and it sounds super, super sick. So I'll kind of show you that. So this is the bass that I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna use live track bass just because this one sounds so perfect. It was modeled after um, Mark Hoppus's bass for I believe the Blink-182 um, self-titled album. And the processing sounds great. So I'm just gonna lay down some MIDI and then uh, we'll kind of have the structure of our verse. Here's what the bass sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
And then here's everything all together. The last thing I want to add is some kind of guitar counter melody. So I'm going to throw that in real quick. I'll track something up and then show you the processing. So here is the counter melody with no processing. And I'm just going to use a twang reverb stereo something something. And I just want to put some filtering on it and a ton of reverb. Here's the final sound. And I think what I want to do is take away this lead out of the first half and then we'll have our verse pretty much done, I think. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave all the drums pretty raw right now and then I'll print them once I have them all fleshed out and we'll mix those. Now it's time to structure out a pre-chorus. I think what I want to do is change the chord progression just to build a little tension. So I'm going to lay down a bass and then we'll check back in. All right, so I think what we're going to do is go to this. just to build a little tension. So I'm gonna track in some guitars as well. Here's what I did for the guitar. So on that same counter melody layer that we did earlier with the twangy kind of tone and all the reverb, we have this. And then for the pre-chorus lead, I just double track this pan left and right. And I think it is, yeah, it's pretty much the same exact uh, chain as the counter melody. So we have this. Now it's time to lay down some drums. I think what we're gonna do is maybe like some big toms and then a super gnarly kind of Travis Barker style fill to go into a chorus. So I found a MIDI progression. Actually, Toontrack has a pop punk um, expansion that was really good. I think maybe done by John Feldman, I can't remember. And it had some MIDI progressions in it. So I just took from that and we have this. Super Travis Barkery. Now let's go to the chorus. I think what we're gonna do is kind of keep a lot of the guitar and stuff similar, um, but we'll pick up the bass and then I think we'll also pick up the drums. So let me lay down a, a new drum pattern that just feels a little bit more upbeat. So here's the drum pattern that I decided on for the chorus. It's just a little bit busier than the verse and I think it will add a little bit of intensity. And it's just something that feels very consistent. Let's go ahead and add in the bass. I think what it's going to do is basically just uh, quarter notes on whatever note it is. So kind of just following the progression. All right, here's it with the, the drums and the bass. And now I'm just going to add in some guitar. Instead of it being palm mute, I'm going to kind of open these up and throw in that lead and maybe even the counter lead from the pre-chorus just to kind of thicken it up. Here is all the guitar we have. So we have the same guitar lead from earlier. And then the same pre-chorus lead. And then the only new guitar that we have for this chorus is super simple. It's just this. It's just the Ram ones with, I added a screamer, like a tube screamer in there just for a little bit of extra crunch. And then same thing on the other side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some cymbals and then I'm gonna print out all these drums so we can actually start processing them. When I'm working with acoustic drums like this, a lot of the time you could just multi sample them out with um, contact. A lot of the time I like to print them so I can mess with them like I would if I tracked a live drummer. So here's what we have with no mixing other than what's kind of baked into the samples already. I think they're a great starting point and they sound really, really good in like the Olivia Rodrigo or the Lil Nas style drums where they're supposed to be a little crunchier and just uh, gnarlier. But for this, I think we need something that is a bit more hard hitting and impactful. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to process these. Let's start with the kick. So the first thing for that kind of Travis Barker kick is you're really gonna wanna control those mids. And since this is kind of a roomier, kind of mid heavy drum, here's the natural. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna scoop out quite a bit of that like 150 to kind of 500 here. I'm just doing a pretty wide, like almost six and a half dB scoop, and then taking out some of these high mids and adding a little bit of click up here. And that's just gonna allow us to compress it and kind of give it that really slappy, kicky punch. The next thing we're doing is adding a ton of compression. This is just gonna use the 401 from uh, Slate's Virtual Mix Rack. And there's a kick punch setting that is pretty perfect and I am slamming it. I just want something that's gonna be a little smackier and slappier. And then the next thing I wanna do is add in just a little bit of room to kind of liven it up. So here we have Verb Suite, and this is just the CLA drum verb. And I've got this dialed way, way back to like 16%. So we're just making it feel a little bit more modern and polished by scooping some of those mids and adding a little bit of compression. Snare is gonna be kind of similar. We're probably gonna to have to do a bit more, but let's go ahead and take a look at that. The first thing I wanna do on the snare is add in some kind of envelope shaper so we can just shorten this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna pull down the release. And that's gonna make it a little bit tighter because I'm gonna add so much compression and saturation. It's gonna loosen it up, so I wanna make sure that we're tightening it before we go and kind of expand it again. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the EQ for this. So this is gonna be pretty gnarly and pretty aggressive. What we're gonna do is roll off the low end because we don't really need it. And then I'm gonna do a big boost around kind of the fundamental low end. And then it's really just about controlling those kind of mids. So we'll go through one by one and I'll kind of show you what everything is doing. That 164 is a nice area to boost, but here, like around this 332 where we have the octave up, just kind of gross, it's not really doing anything we love. Same with kind of 515. I call some of these like mid and high mid areas kind of the papery frequencies. This is really what makes a snare drum just sound a bit thin. And it sounds really cool if you're going for that kind of thrashy, roomy, mid heavy drum. Um, like we did in the Olivia Rodrigo video, but for this, we need something a lot more kind of polished and tight. And this will make a huge difference when we start compressing in a second. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the snare compression. So we're gonna start with a 401 with the snare punch. Here are the settings right here if you wanna copy it. And then with the FG Bomber, which I believe is like an 1176, um, all buttons push. Maybe that's the monster. I can't really remember which is which, but um, I tried pretty much everything and came across this. See, now we're getting that scooped, slappy, super punchy snare that you're kind of knowing. And uh, let's go ahead and hear it in the mix. So we're getting closer. The next thing I wanna add is one of my favorite new plugins that I've gotten, and it's Knock by Decap. He's another uh, producer on YouTube, so if you haven't seen his videos, go check that out. But I normally use this on kicks. However, for this, it added a little bit of punch, a little bit of saturation, and some clipping, all of those are things that I love adding in a snare drum. So then I've just dialed back the wet. Just kind of adding a little bit of thickness back after we've compressed it so much. The next thing is a pawn shop compressor from Cornus. Um, this is again, one of my favorite newer things. I've only had this for a couple weeks now, but here's what it sounds like. And that is just absolutely obliterating it, but in the mix, it sounds so much better. Next thing I wanna add is a little bit of snare room because since we've compressed it and shortened it, it's a little dry right now. So I'm just gonna use the realistic full drum. I believe it's just a large chamber. And that just adds a little bit of that space. Travis Barker's drums are typically pretty roomy, so you can get away with kind of pushing that. And then the last couple things we're doing are just some EQ moves. So I'm just taking out a little bit of that 650 mid, pushing a little bit of that 160 low end and adding a bit of uh, kind of air at 5K. And then I'm just finishing it up with a little bit of a mid scoop again. So this is just kind of tightening everything after we've compressed it a ton. And then here is the final scenario.
Let's go ahead and do the toms. We're not really gonna mess with the hi-hats or cymbals. They sound perfect, but let's go ahead and look at the toms. Here's what they sound like straight up. So let's go ahead and get these working. I start with a little bit of EQ just to kind of tame again some of those mids and high mids. Again, kind of papery, not really what we need in this. Next, we're gonna go back to that handy dandy knock. This one is doing a bit more, as you can see, um, we've got a, a bit more punch and saturation and we're introducing some air. And this is just giving them that slap that sounds really, really nice. Next, we're gonna add in a bit of room so these uh, toms can kind of sit in a space. And then last, I just added a 76 at the very, very end just to compress the room. It's not really doing anything crazy. Let's talk about mixing the guitars. I don't really have too, too much going on because I just like to make my tones where they're pretty fairly mixed, but I do want to do a bit of bus processing, so let's check that out. So for the guitar bus, I'm going to be using the AIP plugin, again, from Corniff. Corniff has some really, really, really cool plugins, and this one's just kind of a channel strip, and it's adding a little bit of body and a little bit of stereo width and compression to these guitars. <laughs> just kind of widens them up, thickens them up, and kind of makes them not so scratchy. And it sounds really, really nice in the mix. Last thing I'm gonna do is scoop away some mids um, out, just out of the middle, so when we add vocals, it's not cluttering it, but it's nothing insane. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in some vocals. So um, I'll kind of write the melodies on camera right now. This will be pretty simple. There's not too much behind me, so let's just go ahead and freeball some stuff. Alright, cool. So there's the melody. I'm pretty cool with that. I don't even really need to write anything else. We're just gonna go with that. Let's write some lyrics. Let's do... Let me do this on a on a pad actually. All right, now we're in here. Let's do. I feel I feel like I'm always faded. I feel like I'm always wasted. I'm gonna write these out and then check back in. All right, so for the chorus, I have uh, this. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Guess I'm still a little jaded since you left and I still haven't faced it. Saw you walking down on Melrose. You look like you're wearing his clothes. Guess that's how the shit always goes. Now I drink a whole fit just to feel whole. All right, that's cool. I'm gonna leave that. Let's work on a pre-chorus. Um, let's do, I wanna change it up a little bit. Yeah. All right, let's do. Let's do, I try my best. And then I kind of want to do like a call and response vocal, but it wasn't quite enough. Something I hear happening a lot in this kind of genre. I gave my all, but you fucked it up. All right, let's do that. And then let's do a chorus. I'm just gonna write the chorus off camera because we're running long and then I'll check in once we have the vocals popped in. I tracked up some vocals. I dragged that guitar over to the intro and here's kind of what we have as the final. So let's go ahead and take a look at the vocal chain. It's nothing too out of the ordinary for us. It's just a bit drier. So here's the lead vocal. We've got some auto-tune. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Get All right, I'll turn these sends off and then we've got some virtual mix rack. We're just taking out some of these mids before we compress so they don't get out of control. And they're doing quite a bit of compression. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Get then we've got some de-esser. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Nothing crazy. And then we've got some EQ. Um, 
I tend to EQ pretty heavy just to get some of these like nasty mids out. Here's what it sounds like without. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Get you just really don't want those kind of thick vocals in this kind of mix. It's just not really gonna do much. Little Arvox to squeeze it down a little bit more. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Little bit more DS just to make sure that we're not out of control with all the compression. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Little bit of soothe to control some of those upper harmonics that might be getting a little nasty. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. And then some mag EQ just to add in a little bit of air now that we've darkened them up with some of the DSing and soothe. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill. Then we just have our usual suspects for the sins. We've got uh, widening. I feel like I'm always wasted. That's just a Roland Dimension D on a send. We've got a short reverb. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Slap delay. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Stereo vox delay. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Guess and then a long reverb that's just tucked in. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. And then in the whole mix, you've got this. I feel like I'm always wasted. Pop another pill, I'm faded. Guess I'm still a little jaded since you left and I So that's the vocal mix for the lead vocal throughout and for these left and right vocals. It's just the same thing, they're just a little bit darker. Yes, you're just another wasted year. But I have one panned all the way left and all the way right. Again, separate takes, so they're not uh, phasing out. And then we have some harmony. So let's go ahead and let's just look at the pre-chorus because this is the part where we have some extra stuff. So we have this um, response vocal that is basically the same all the way up until here. I have a doubler and then we have an EQ kind of band passing all of this and then kind of a big... Um, halftime delay and some saturation I tried my best and it wasn't quite enough I gave my all and you fucked it up so that'll be the pre-chorus and then we're just layering that up with these kind of more natural sounding vocals I tried my best I gave my and then the same thing in octave down. I tried my best. I did not. I gave my all. And you fucked it up! I guess you're just a nut. And those harmonies are the same vocal chain as well. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So here's what the pre chorus sounds like with all the vocal production in there. Just a feel And in the chorus, we have the lead vocal, the left vocal, and the right vocal, all doing the same thing in unison. Guess you're just another wasted year, just a dozen wasted tears. And for the vocal chain on this, I used an Advanced Audio 251 going into a Heritage Audio uh, HA81A or whatever, the kind of 1073 style preamp and EQ that they have, and then straight into my Apollo, and that's it. The vocal didn't have any compression or anything on it coming in. Here's what the raw vocal sounded like. Guess you're just another wasted year. Just a dozen wasted tears. Just another broken promise I can tell my therapist. Just another... So I have these three vocals kind of continuing throughout. Guess you're just another wasted year. And then what I did is I did a harmony. And this kind of has something similar to that response vocal with like a doubler and some filtering Guess you're just another wasted year. Just a dozen wasted tears. Just another broken promise I can tell my And then I've got these vocals that come in and out on that harmony track from the pre-chorus that we talked about that just do this. Wasted year. Wasted tears. Just another other wasted year. Just a dozen wasted tears. Just another So that's pretty much it. 
We're gonna do one more thing and then I'll play this all the way through. And it's the essential Travis Barker drum fill. So what we're gonna do is see what we got here. Maybe we don't wanna use a phaser, maybe let's use a flanger. I think that might be a little bit better. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and do something with this. I'm gonna go ahead and disable it. And then let me go ahead and disable that when the drums come back in. Let's check that mix. I think that's gonna do it. Let's take a listen to the whole thing. All right, let me go ahead and make sure that I have the sour candy disabled. And here we go. Bada boom, we're done. All right, and that's gonna do it. As you can see, the composition behind these pop punk songs is pretty simple. It's normally guitar lead, rhythm guitars, bass, some drums, and then maybe some vocal stacks. And occasionally there might be like a guitar solo or a couple synths happening, but they're pretty stripped down. They're pretty organic. And it's really just big polished sounds that are all kind of working together, but there's not too, too much happening. So again, if you like the drums that we used in this video, you can go check out our new drum kit, Sour Candy. That's on makepopmusic.com as well as all of our other free and paid content. So head over there. And then if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because that helps us out on the channel a ton. And then other than that, we'll see you guys in 2022 with more content. Let us know in the comments what you want to see below, and we will see you guys next year. Much love, everyone. Peace. Hey.